I just installed the latest version of Arc OS on the R36 clone, and in this video I'll walk you through the simple step-by-step -step tutorial, but before we get started, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. It means a lot to me and it shows that these videos are making a difference, which is my biggest motivation to keep creating more for you. My name is Frank, and this is my channel 16 bits or higher. Before we start, just a quick note, you may not need this update. If your device is working fine and you're not looking for new features, I'd say stick with what you got. But if you're on an older version of ArcOS without Wi-Fi support, then this update is worth it. Otherwise, flashing the card and copying all your ROMs back can be a hassle. So if you're happy with your setup, you may want to skip it. To get started, here are the tools you'll need for installing the updated Arc OS. First, a micro SD card. You can reuse the one already in your device as long as you back it up, but if you're updating from the stock card that came with the system, I recommend using a brand new card instead. You also need a memory card reader, and of course you're going to need your R36S clone. Now that you have the tools ready, the first step is to back up your micro SD card. Insert it into your computer and copy the boot partition into a folder that will be easy to find later. And then the EC ROMs partition. You'll need the EC ROMs backup later to put your games, BIOS files, saves, and save states back onto the newly flashed card, along with any ports or theme packs you had before. Once you backed up your micro SD card, the next step is to reformat it. And if you're using a new card, go ahead and format that one too. That's going to help minimize errors during the flashing process. You can use either FAT32 or XFAT. Both will work just fine. Here, I'm using the Mini Tool Partition Wizard because it's simple and easy to use, but you can use any formatting program like SD Card Formatter or even Windows Explorer. Now that your micro SD card is ready, you'll need two programs, 7-Zip and Rufus. Install 7-Zip on your computer, and for Rufus, I recommend the portable version, since some viewers reported issues with the installed version during flashing. Once you've got those, head over to the ArcOS for K36 GitHub page and download the latest image file. I've included the link in the description below. When you get to the ArcOS GitHub page, be sure to download the image made for K36 and R36S clones. The file will be downloaded in a .xc format, which is basically a Linux zip file. Here's where you use 7-zip to extract it into a .img file. From my experience, flashing straight from the zip file can cause boot issues when you do the initial setup on the device, so that's why I always recommend on zipping it first. Next, start Rufus and make sure your microSD card shows inside the device box. Click Select, find the image file and click Open. You will see it listed inside the boot selection box and press Start. A warning will pop up, but just click OK and Rufus will begin flashing the image. It takes a while, but once it's done, you will see a new boot drive in your computer. Next, open the new boot folder on your microSD card and replace the .dtb file that was just installed with the one that you backed up at the start of the video. This step makes sure you'll actually see the installation process when you insert the card into your R36S clone and power it on. Now, when you insert the card, you'll see the full installation process since the .dtv file that you used is compatible with your device. So just let the installation finish, confirm the correct version was installed, and then power off your device.
Just go ahead and eject the card when you shut it down. Insert the microSD card back into your computer and now it's time to copy your files from the backup that you created earlier. Go into each folder and transfer your ROMs just like I'm showing you in the video. Do this for every system including your BIOS, saves, save states, and any ports or themes you had before the update. Once everything is copied over, safely eject the card and pop it back into your device. When you insert the card back onto your device, you should be able to see all your systems installed. And if you go to the main menu and you go to the user settings, if you had any themes that were transferred over from your backup, you should be able to see this, the themes there. Like a, you can see here, all my themes were transferred over and I could just choose the one that I like and it'll work. You don't actually need Theme Master for the, uh, to be able to install themes. Now, when it comes to the ports, the ports you're going to have to install, but you have to go into the uh, options folder. But before we do that, I, we have to connect the Wi-Fi dongle. And I'm going to take the time to do that right now so that you can see that it works now. But I believe I'm going to have to restart it because a lot of times it won't recognize it until you restart. So let me do that right now. Go ahead and restart it. And to get that Wi-Fi going, you have to go into the Options folder. And go down to Wi-Fi. And you're going to connect to new Wi-Fi connection. And as you can see, it picks up all the Wi-Fi signals. So let me log on to my Wi-Fi real quick. Okay. And as you can see now, I am connected and we exit out of this and in the same options folder we're going to go back and we're going to go to tools and run portmaster. And right now it's installing and this may take a few minutes. I might have to pause the video and come back to this. And I believe it is installed. So let's test it out now that it's installed. Let's go to manage ports. And there are all the ports that I have in this system right now. So let's get out of this here and let's exit. And let's try to run, let's try to run Half-Life, see if it works. And there we have it. It's running. So the same thing should happen with uh, the rest of your ports if you had any transferred over. If uh, they then transfer over and they don't work, it would probably be a good idea to just reinstall them. And there you go. You just finished installing Arc OS on your R36S clone. You've copied back your ROMs, BIOS files, saves and save states, as well as your ports and themes if you had any before the update. Now all that's left is to tweak your settings in Emulation Station and RetroArch to get everything just the way you like it. I've seen some users run into issues like no sound from the speakers or the gamepads not registering correctly sometimes with the buttons all mixed up. But since this video is already a bit long, I'll cover how I fix those problems in a separate video. So for now, that's going to wrap it up for this tutorial. 
I really hope you found it helpful. And if you have any questions or need extra help, just drop a comment below. And like I said at the start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing so that you don't miss future tutorials and updates. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end, and I will see you in the next video. Enjoy your R36S clone.